expecting to see one thing and one thing only. And I'm not talking about the nudity. <laughs> so this next song is about that. Not the nudity. <laughs> I enjoy doing more than anything else, which I'm now going to sing to you about. <laughs> it's Friday night. It's Friday night. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. My significant other has gone off out with her friends, so I'm 
sitting on my own, but I don't mind. I don't mind. I won't protest. I won't protest. Because it's times like these when I can indulge in what I like doing best. Don't make no one because I'm getting pants drunk. Attempted to write a mansplained love song. Okay? And so, this is my attempt at that satire. Just remember that. <laughs> Let's give it a go. This is a song for all the ladies. <laughs> Much when you need to find a man. <laughs> Tough 
who love you and protect you and correct you when you're wrong. To sweetly serenade you, that means singing you a nice song. To sweep you on your feet, like you're in a fairy tale. To give your life a purpose, you need a heterosexual male. To a published book on neuroscience, my darling, good for you! You're a very clever girl, no doubt, your success may well inspire. But this balance is hide the truth of what you secretly desire. To want to hug you, and to kiss you, to tell you you're good. To explain films and literature because you may have misunderstood. To undermine your politics, but your fair appearance hail. To give you affirmation, you need a heterosexual male. <laughs> While I'm all for feminism and only want what's best for you, there's no monopoly on suffering and men have problems too. You claim the patriarchal society is to blame. But hold on there, sweetheart, for not all men are the same. <laughs> to rush to keep you company when you're feeling all alone. But when you turn down his advances, complain he's in the friend zone. To subtly criticise and patronise you when you fail. To define you as a person, you need a heterosexual male To grab you and to hold you, to tempt you into bed To strip down to his underwear before you give him the go-ahead With attempts at your arousal that rarely prevail To satisfy your needs, you need a heterosexual to us all, and that is, we don't really need to go to pointless work meetings in person. <laughs> Can I get a huzzah for that? <laughs> okay, um, but it seems ridiculous why we keep getting called back into them, okay? So, um, this next song uh, was written about that. <laughs> Say for what? You said this was important, but it seems that it is not. You were rather vague on what this small liaison would entail. But could you really not just put this in an email? <laughs> have we down tools and rushed over at the mere drop of a hat to satisfy your urge? Have a cosy little chat, or full of pointless questioning but lacking in detail? Could you really not just put this in an email? Could you really not just put this in an email? Could you really not just put this in an email. Was it for the sense of drama that you called us to attend? Somebody here is definitely not winning any friends. I'm sick of staying after hours and early morning starts, of lengthy lunchtime lectures staring gormously at charts, being forced to rush my sandwich goes too far beyond the pale. Could you really not just put this in an email? sense of self-importance that these merry meetings bring won't justify the training sessions where nobody learns a thing. We'd like to ditch the role plays and the meetings face to face and say a favour of sitting at our desks, perusing at our own sweet pace. If this is what it takes to keep the top brass satisfied, tell them all of this box ticking leaves on feeling dead inside. And we do not need a hookup to discuss the paper train. Could you really not just put this in an email? during a busy working week. Were you surprised at the eye rolling when you step forward to speak? It's a sign of the disdain behind a thin and flimsy veil. Could you really not just put this in an email? Was the presentation needed just to keep us all on side? Was anybody actually listening or just reading from the slides? All the unrealistic targets were all set up to fail. Could you really not just put them in an email? Could you really not just put them in an email? Not just put them in an email. Was it 
your sense of drama that you hold us to attend. Somebody here is definitely not really any friends. Are there any explanations for the sudden summonings? Are there hidden revelations that the awkward silence brings? If there are not, I, I propose that we this gathering derail at the fuck's sake. Please just put this in an email. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. years have taught us a few things, okay, and we've been asked as ourselves as a society to look at ourselves in quite a harsh way, in quite a critical way, um, about the things that we've enjoyed in the past and the privileges that we have um, within this society. Um, and lots of people have taken that on board and actually have been trying to affect change, while other people have stubbornly, stubbornly been not wanting to take that on board, and I think that's something that causes a lot of the problems that we have in society today. Okay, so this next song, um, whether you agree with it or not, has a banging sing-along chorus that I would like you to join in on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so, yeah, this is about um, changes that we happen to do um, and make, and criticism that we happen to have with, with our past. Um, this is a song called What Was So Good About The Good Old Days, and I'd like to see you clapping along as well. Let's get some clapping going. The future is scary, and the present is confusing and strange. But I always find myself on the wary of a sudden refusal to change. Thinking of the past can be lovely, the old tunes were bangers as well. But it wasn't always cosy, as we like to pretend. In fact, in many ways, the glory years were absolute hell. The things we thought we knew are long past overdue. Of some form of we were pity. The rose tinted glasses have become somewhat warm, and the excuse it got to bother just sound weak. So I asked, what was so good about the good old days? Haven't we moved on from here yet? Are we supposed to grow and change our ways? And were well, there certain good old lessons we do well not to forget? What was so good about the good old days? Can't we bend back where they
you're lucky me It may sound silly But I don't care I've got sunlight I've got the moon I've got the stars above Me and my sweetie Then we both share Sappy but happy Happy go lucky Season. <laughs> but 
The forecast gave snow and ice warnings. So that night they sent trucks out to grit. But when I looked out next morning, the roads were all covered with shade and cream. Be nice and clean, shade every day, and you'll always look in. Next one's political. Now we all knew the Tories were lying. When they sold the virtues of Brexit And lo and behold, six years later The country is knee-deep in shade and cream Be nice and clean, shave every day And you'll always look keen Last verse And so my story has ended should quit. If any of you were offended, stick your head in a bucket of shade and cream. Be nice and clean, shave every day and you'll always look in. One more time, shave and cream, be nice and clean, shave every day and you'll always look in. I have flung the banjo lady over my shoulder in a rather rakish manner. <laughs> because on this next one I don't need it. And I'm actually going to take the mic off of the mic stand. <laughs> and move that out of the way. Seamless there. I think it deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Now, I'm going to move the glass of water out of the way as well. So it doesn't get kicked over, because you never know. These things happen. Now, folks, I would like you all, if you're able, to stand up. If not, then you can raise your hands in the air and be clapping along. So stand up for this one, folks, if you were able. Okay? Because I'm meaning business. I'm meaning business. Folks in the middle, stand up. Let's get standing. Okay. So, your part in this one's quite simple. I like to dedicate this one to sexists, racists, homophobes, transphobes, bigots of all types, the Tory party. The Republican party. And, you know, some members of the Labour party as well. But anyway, this is a song called Stop Being an Arsehole. And your part is quite simple, okay? You're going to hear me sing, stop being an asshole, and you're going to shout out, okay? <laughs> so you're going to hear, stop being an asshole. Okay! Excellent work, folks. Excellent work. Let's give it a go. Now, the reason I've asked people to stand up if they're able is because it involves some marching and clapping, okay? So I would like to see you all marching and clapping on this one. <laughs> you will recognise the tune. <clears throat> The time has come, you will agree to stop being afraid To do away with subtlety and call a spade a spade We pass the point where one can simply turn and look away Stop being an asshole. Okay. We've been politely sitting on the fence for far too long And burying our heads in the sand to pretend there's nothing wrong Ignoring a rotten smell will never make it go away Stop being an asshole. Okay! We've reached the end of these little steps of the debate And must adjust the balance now before it is too late Does every informed moron deserve to have a say? Society won't progress while there are halfwits in the way Privileged immature fuckwits do not recognise their breasts And when given half a chance they can't help but make a mess The grown-ups need to intervene to interrupt their pay Stop being an 
asshole. Oh, now for a little dance break. So what I'd like to do is put your hands right in front of the hand and spin them around in a circle. Across the years, didn't do so for all racist launch political careers. What we need to entitled that they deserve to have their way. Stop being an asshole. Okay. Charlotte, in the realms of civil rights, cannot simply be abandoned and set back overnight, reversing all advancements by four or five decades. Stop being an asshole. The time. You never took the use or their advantages to hide when the proverbial gets the fan and will be first to place the blame for protesting far too much when they should really be ashamed. So let's all shout out loud when they're a bigot's holding court. Let's run words of power and cut their fancy craving short. The darker days of history must not be seen again. Stop being an arsehole. someone else in that um, in that little diatribe there, Matt Hancock. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking I'm a celebrity. Okay folks. We're actually starting to come towards the end of our set now. Oh. That wasn't nearly disappointed enough. <laughs> We're starting to come towards the... Jesus! We're start... Can you still hear me okay? That was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> Drama! <laughs> We're reaching the end of my set now, folks. Oh. We've still got a few songs left, though. Yeah. The next answer is... Bizarre! <laughs> um, so this next song um, is, is about... Uh, myself and my partner have been together for 18 years. Oh. Oh. Sounds a bit more enthusiasm as well. <laughs> We've been together for 18 years. <laughs> good work, good work. Okay, um, we've been together for 18 years, and during that time, we've had many discussions. But I often say we've never discussed. We have had discussions about it, and we both agreed very, very quickly on two things: that we never want to be married, and we never want to have children. <laughs> this next song is about the latter. <clears throat>
special guest back on stage. There we go, excellent work. Okay, now this song was written mid-lockdown in 2020. If you remember back to then, okay, um, when we were all wondering what was going to happen with the state of the world, would we ever be able to go out again? Would we ever be able to see our friends and family again? So this is a song called, well, this is shit. <laughs> okay, and your part is quite simple, okay, because um, I would like you to join in on this. When I, when I sing, well, this is shit, you're going to repeat, this is shit. Okay? <laughs> So let's try that. Well, this is shit. This is shit. Oh, this is shit. This is shit. Okay, so it's twice of the chorus, and then it goes, this is shit, this is shit, this is shit. Okay, and you can join in on that. And let's give this a go. <clears throat> Northwest. Chris is from the Northwest. He was able to organise some shows up here. 
and I was able to organise some shows down south, as we like to call it. Um, so we've been doing a, a six day tour, which is, this is exactly halfway through now, aren't we? Yeah. Halfway through that. Um, so if anybody's interested, um, if you want to come and see us again, we're actually playing just down the road in Chester. In a couple of weeks time, and Manchester as well actually. So if you do want to come and be big old fan, fan people, fan girls, fan boys, or what's the collective term for fat? It's just fans, isn't it? Just fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's a <nice> question. <laughs> um, then yeah, it'd be lovely to see to see you in the audience there as well. Um, so we decided we would we would play a song together um, as a bit of promotion for this. Um, so I'm just going to move that there and that there. Two, two. Um, so we decided we'd, we'd, we'd do a, a song from the 90s, um, from, from the Britpop era, which, which some of you might remember. <laughs> the battle of the Britpop bands, the Britpop giants, and this actually was the winner in that particular battle in 1995, maybe? Something like that, 95? Anyway, yes, yeah, so this is a song by Blur. <clears throat> We might need to whack the, um, the monitors up a little bit, Alex will whack the speakers up a little bit as well. Um, I'm not sure how quiet this is. <coughs> Live my 